In June of 2023, I quit my steady $65,000 per year teaching job. So I needed to build a desk for when I work from home and try to generate an income that could be very inconsistent. But this build didn't go quite as planned and apparently this white oak ate too much iron. Let me explain. For about five years, I had been working 60 plus hours per week and it was going fine. But then my wife and I had our first child. During the weekdays, most of the time I would leave to go to work while she was still sleeping and then get home from work after she had been put to bed. So I didn't really get to see her much until the weekend and that started taking its toll on me. Not to mention that's a lot of work to put on my wife who also works full time. I'm also a personal trainer, which is the reason I was working so many hours, but our first child is not the only reason I quit my teaching job, but more on that in a little bit. When I put the white oak pieces together for the tabletop glue up, I noticed they didn't fit together perfectly. So I made these rounded calls to try and make this panel glue up nice and flat. It's the curve in those calls that pushes the panel pieces together. I'll be working at my new job from home and my wife will use this desk as well and I thought she could use a nicer desk than the one we currently have. As with everything I build, I made a bunch of mistakes and I was able to fix most of them, but of course the one mistake I was not able to fix involved epoxy and it was on the tabletop. I bought some brass powder because I thought a brass epoxy inlay would look really cool on the tabletop. But after pouring it in the knot holes, I realized I did not use enough powder. So I mixed more in, but even then, you can probably tell it doesn't look like brass now. And spoiler alert, it doesn't look like brass at the end either. Right after I sprayed some water on this tabletop to pop the grain up so I can then sand it back down, I realized there was some bluish staining. After doing some research on the World Wide Web, I found out that this stain could be caused from iron and to remove it, you can use oxalic acid, but that sounded like a lot of work, so I went a different route. A nice little tip in woodworking is that you can use templates to make pretty much any repeatable shape you want, and I used my tapering jig on the table saw and the oscillating spindle sander to make this leg template. You'll see in just a second that because I tried to Frankenstein this template together with CA glue and wood glue, it kind of broke apart. It still worked out okay in the end, but it wasn't the best way to make this template, but at least you'll get to hear the first gosh darn it of the video. I mentioned before that my wife having our first child was not the only reason that I quit my job. The second reason I decided to quit my job was because my wife got pregnant with our second child. Family is my number one priority, and so the thought of not seeing my kids very much was terrifying. So even though quitting my teaching job was a very difficult decision, I knew it had to be made. And I knew I would never regret spending more time with my family. I'm not really a numbers or a math guy, so when calculating the taper on this leg, I just did what I thought would look nice. So at the bottom, I did an inch and a half and the top was two and a half inches wide. And I figured out that it was 13 degrees on one side and two degrees on the other side to attach the legs to the stretcher, literally by trial and error. I wouldn't recommend doing it this way, but it works for me and it really didn't take that long. I'm using this really simple dowel jig to put the legs together, and you'll see they didn't go together very well the first time, but it was easily fixable. It's really hard to drill perfectly straight holes with just your drill, so these legs did not go together very well, and there was some gaps. But all I needed to do was widen the holes with the drill, and they went together really nicely. I'll give you a fairly inexpensive tip on how to drill perfectly straight holes with just your drill later in this video.
as you can see, the leg stretcher piece thingy was too narrow to match the curve on the template. For this, all I needed to do was take some material off my template with my spindle sander. Bada bing, bada boom, problem is fixed. Vroom, vroom. This next tip is really hit or miss for me using this off cut to clamp the leg assembly together. This time it worked really well, but sometimes that little off cut shifts when I put the clamps on. I filmed this part to show how easy it would be to take off, but of course it was not. So what am I going to be using this desk for, and what is this new job that I got? I guess I didn't just get the job, but it's something I've been working towards for the past three years, and I just started getting paid for it fairly recently. The new job is, well, woodworking. More specifically, content creation and build plans. More on that in just a second, but you've got to see this. Okay, funny story. I let some off cuts build up and one got stuck and ripped a hole in my table saw insert plate. After I changed my shorts, I got out this $40 Milescraft drill guide and this allowed me to drill perfectly straight holes so that the dowels on this leg assembly would line up really nicely. I started selling my plans at the end of 2022 and even though I started my YouTube channel in 2020, I didn't start getting paid until this year. I knew I couldn't make up the income I would lose by just adding more personal training clients, so I had to add something else. Luckily, woodworking is that something else and has recently become a viable income stream that will help me provide for my family. Okay, mistake number, I've lost count, but this lid is not flat. So I'm gonna put some shims onto a piece of three quarter inch plywood that will act as my flattening jig. And I will flatten this piece by putting it through my planer. I saw Jason over at Bourbon Moth use this technique on a couple of nightstands he built recently. So I'm using a 3 8 inch round over bit to round over the edges on this piece and I think it'll give it a nice mid-century modern type vibe. So even though you know the work I'm going to be doing now, you still may be a bit confused as to why I would need a desk for woodworking and making YouTube videos. And I guess I don't need a desk, but I want a desk because I like building things and I think it'll make some of the tasks I need to do for my business a lot more enjoyable. Tasks like creating written plans, video editing, posting content, answering emails, writing down video ideas, sketching new projects, and other tasks that I'll need to complete throughout the week. Gosh darn it. There was a little wobble on the storage box, so I sanded down the bottom of it, and then I attached it to the other side of the desk where it actually sat a little better for some reason. I used dowel pins to mark exactly where I needed the holes for the dowels to be. And then I used my drill guide again because I needed these holes to be perfectly straight. If you've never seen any of Chris's YouTube videos over at Four Ice Furniture, go and watch them, they're phenomenal. I mean, not right now, maybe wait till after this video. But if you have seen his content, you'll notice that this desk is looking similar to the desk that he built. That's because I used his design, as well as a few other designs I found online, as inspiration for this desk. Although I don't know for certain that this exact desk has never been built, it probably has, but I couldn't find it on the interwebs. This is the first time I've ever used Rubio Cotton White on a piece of furniture, and I really like how it brightened up the white oak, but let me know what you think in the comments. A little while ago, I took stock of what was most important in my life and family took the top spot. 
Time is a non-renewable resource, and the more time I get to spend with my wife and two kids and two cats, the better. Remember, be kind and be awesome.